Welcome to the latest installment of the 30 minute workout series. My name is Jeff Bartles. I'm an infrastructure technical specialist here at Autodesk. And today I'm joined by my colleagues, Jerry Bartles, Angel Espinosa, and Alan Gilbert. In today's session, we're going to look at how we can avoid overlap when extracting volumes from intersecting civil 3D corridors. If you're unfamiliar with the 30 minute workout concept, this is a webinar series we put together for the purpose of demonstrating tools and workflows not covered during traditional training courses. Our goal with this series is to help shorten the learning curve for many of these features so that folks using Civil 3D in this case can make the most of their Autodesk investment. There's a couple of ground rules for the sessions. Uh, since we're together for only 30 minutes, our intention is to always start on time and end on time. Don't worry about taking notes because these sessions are always recorded. Everyone who is registered for the session will get access to a recording. If you have questions during the session, go ahead and put that in the Q&A pane. Jerry, Allen, and Angel will be fielding those as we go. If we don't get to all of the questions by the end of the session, we will get back to you with an answer. Likewise, if you'd like to schedule a follow-up one-on-one call regarding the topics that we cover, please put that in the Q&A panel as well. We always enjoy speaking with other users. We're going to be talking about a lot of things today. We're going to start out by learning how to create alignments that we can use as match lines. We'll look at how we can assign those alignments as targets for sample lines. We'll look at how we can build custom material lists for, from multiple corridor models. We'll also explore how we can use the gap feature to control when and where average end area volumes are calculated. And then along the way, I'm going to be sharing a ton of additional learning resources related to this topic. As always, this is going to be a PowerPoint free zone. We're going to be working live in the application for the duration of our time together today. Having said all that, it, I'm making the assumption going into this that everybody has extracted some corridor volumes at least once before using sample lines and, and things like that. If you have not, don't worry, you'll still be able to follow along with the session. Um, after the session's over though, I've, I've got some things on screen here, a couple of uh, recordings that I've posted to YouTube. If uh, after the session's over, if you would take out, take a look at these videos, this, this will help fill in some of the basics. Once again, watching these videos will help you out if this is the first time you've ever extracted volumes. Okay, so our housekeeping is taken care of. Let's jump over to Civil 3D. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm working in Civil 3D 2022. Uh, what we look at today is going to be applicable to every version of Civil 3D. On my screen, I've got a pair of corridor models that create a proposed intersection design. I have one corridor model here that's based off this road A alignment, and I have another corridor model for my secondary road here is based off this road B alignment. Just for a second, I am going to select the road A corridor, and I'll come over to my properties palette, and I'll change the code set style here so we can see the assembly insur insertions. You can see how the assemblies create my lanes, my curb and gutter, my daylights, until we get to the intersection area, and then they're just modeling these through lanes. After the intersection, they model the rest of the lanes, curb and gutter, daylights, things like that. We can see the turn lanes, the widenings go away, and then it, it ends up at a two-lane road. Now let's grab the road B corridor. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll change the code set style so we can see the assembly insertions. And very similar, I've got my assemblies coming through, modeling the roadway and the, the daylights and things like that, until we get into the return areas. And here you can see how the lanes are targeting the proposed center line, as well as the edge of pavement for these through lanes. Now that we understand how the corridors fit together, I'm going to select both of these, and I'm going to flip these back to more of a plottable style, just to simplify things on screen. If you have ever extracted corridor volumes before, you know that we do that with sample lines. Uh, to extract the volumes for road A, for instance, I might place some sample lines along the road A alignment. To extract the uh, volumes for the road B corridor, I might create some sample lines along the road B alignment. The challenge is the area of the intersection. I may have intersecting sample lines. And whenever your sample lines intersect, you run the risk of a double calculation of your volumes. Fortunately, we can virtually eliminate uh, double calculation in Civil 3D through the use of match lines. Uh, generally speaking, we're going to create some alignments. Civil 3D allows our sample lines to target alignments for the swath widths. If I have all of my sample lines targeting common alignments, there will be no intersections, and therefore there will be no duplication of volumes. So that's where we're going. I'm going to start out by creating the geometry that I'll use for my match lines. I'll do that by coming up and I'll launch the offset command. And then I'm going to use the through option. I want to offset geometry through a point. I want to offset the road B alignment through the furthest curb return here. You can see this one's obviously further than this one. I'll select that same alignment and we'll go in the other direction. We'll offset through this return. 
Let's grab the road A alignments and we'll go through the furthest curb return. And we'll do it one more time here to the south. Looks like we'll offset through this one. And I'll press my space bar when finished. When you offset an alignment, it creates polylines. And this boundary is what I'm going to use to create my match lines. Now I did it with offsets. You can create this boundary using whatever uh, drawing method you like. The goal being that these edges pass through the furthest curb return. And it's also best if these lines are perpendicular to the crossing alignments. In this case, that works great for me because I've got a nice 90 degree intersection. I'd like to do one more thing. I'd like to clean up the screen a little bit. Let's, let's get rid of some of this excess geometry. I'm going to do that with the fillet command. I'll launch fillet. I'll click a, uh, one of these polylines and then I'll hold my shift key and click another one to create a nice sharp corner. I'll tap my space bar, click a polyline, shift click, space bar to go back into the command. First one, shift click the second, and then I'll do that again to finish this up. So this will be the boundary that I'm going to use. Let's do one more thing. I am going to select the road A corridor again, and let's turn those assembly insertions back on. To create my match lines, I'm actually gonna be creating two. Uh, I'll have one match line here on the north that is gonna go from this upper left corner down to the intersection of the alignment and my feature line for the edge of pavement, back up to this corner in the upper right. So let's go to the alignment menu. I'll choose alignment creation tools, and I'm gonna call this alignment match line north. I can then choose a style for that. I have one, not gonna go with any labels. Those aren't needed. Let me go ahead and click okay. To draw my alignment, I'm gonna use the tangent, tangent, no curves option. I don't need any curves here. We'll start here in the upper left. I'll take this to the apparent intersection of my alignment and feature line, and then I'll take this to the upper right. I'll press enter when finished. We'll go ahead and close the toolbar. There's one of my match lines. I will then go right back into the command by tapping space bar, and I'm gonna create another alignment called match line self. Keep the same style and labels. We will do the same drawing method, and I'm gonna start in the lower left. We'll go to the apparent intersection of the alignment and the feature line, and then we'll go down to the lower right. Let's finish this up. So there we go. These are the match lines that I'll be using. So as my sample lines, are moving along here for road A, I'll use these match lines to squeeze them down and then expand them back out such that they can continue on after the intersection. Likewise, as I create my sample lines for the road B corridor, this match line will squeeze them down to virtually nothing. They will then pop up again on this side and expand back out and continue on. Let's create our first set of sample lines. I'm gonna do that by coming up to the ribbon and I'll choose sample lines. I would like to create sample lines along the road A uh, alignment. When we create sample lines, the sample lines sample data in our file. In the bottom of this dialog box, you can see all the data sources in this drawing. I'm going to select all of them by holding my shift key and, and selecting, and then I'll click to remove all of these toggles. I would like to extract the structural volumes from these corridors, things like aggregates and concrete and asphalt, things like that. To do that, I'm going to sample just the corridor models. I'll select road A, I'll hold my control key and select road B and then I'll click to sample those. As long as I'm here, I'm gonna click in the style column. This allows me to select a style in the event I choose to display these corridors in a future section view. When I click okay, Civil 3D knows what I'd like to sample. It just needs to know where to place the sample lines. Here in the toolbar, I'm gonna to open the menu and I'll choose by range of stations. I'm gonna place these using multiple ranges. The first range of sample lines uh, I don't need that to start at the beginning of the alignment. I'm going to go ahead and click the green block. And I'd like the first range to start here at the end of my region, which is technically also the end of the alignment. Now, do I want that to run to the other end of the alignment? No. I would like this first range to end here at the beginning of my match line. I will go with a 90 foot swath width to the left and right. You can use whatever swath width works best for you. For this example, I'm gonna place these at a 50 foot interval. You can use whatever interval works best for you. Finally, do I wanna place a sample line at the beginning and end of that range? I would like to place a sample line at the beginning. However, at the end of the range, that would be right here. I'm not going to place a sample line because I'm going to create some more through this area. Let me click okay. So if I zoom out, you can see the initial sample lines there. Let's create some more. I'm still in the command. I'm going to open this menu again, and I'll choose by range of stations. This range, let me click the green block, is going to start here at the beginning of my match line alignment, and it's going to end over here at the end of that match line alignment. 
Now for these, for the swath width, I would like these on the left and right to target these alignments that I created. So for the left swath width, I'm gonna say that I would like you to target an alignment. Which alignment? I'll click the ellipsis button and that is gonna be match line north. I'll click okay. And then for the right side swath width, I would like that to follow an alignment. Which alignment? I'll click the ellipsis button and you can pick from the list here. I love using the green block. If I click the green block, I could just say on the right side, use this alignment and it'll grab it for me, match line south. Since we're going into the intersection, I'm going to knock the interval down to about five feet. You can use whatever interval you like in the intersection. <clears throat> and then finally, where would I like to have sample lines? Would I like these at the beginning and the end of the range? And I'm gonna say yes in both cases. Let's click okay. You can see those sample lines have been created. Let's create a couple more. I'll go by range of stations. And this final range is going to start here at the end point of my match line, and it will end at the end of my region. There we go. Going to go with a 90 foot swath width left and right. Since we're beyond the intersection, I'm going to go back to a 50 foot interval. We'll come down and then do I need a sample line at the beginning of that range? I'm going to say no, because that's where the match line is. I already have one there. Uh, I would like to have a sample line here at the end. I'll click OK. And then I'll tap my space bar to complete the command. And now if I zoom out, you can see how those sample lines were created. So this is my sample line group one. It runs up to the intersection. They tighten up and they squeeze down here to two lanes. They expand back out and continue on. Now that I've created these sample lines, let's create some section views. I like to do this so that I can review my corridor model and make sure that everything looks as expected. To make my section views, I'm gonna change my drawing scale momentarily to one equals 10 feet. And then I'll come up and open the section views menu and choose create multiple views. I would like to create my views using the road A alignment and the road A sample line group that we just made. And then my template file that I'm using has all the settings appropriately assigned to create draft section views. So I'm just gonna choose create section views and I'll click on screen. If I zoom in, I can see this is the west side of that road where it starts out at two lanes wide. We can see as it heads east, it's expanding for the turn lanes continues to expand. Eventually it gets into the intersection and the curb and gutter drops off. If I hover over these, you can see it is doing exactly what I said. It's, it's sampling both of those corridors. As we continue on, it tapers back down to where it's just two lanes. And then as we head east, it expands out, curb and gutter comes back with the widenings, and then that tapers back down to two lanes. So all of this looks good. That I don't see any anomalies there. Everything looks okay. At this point, let's calculate the material volumes, the average end area material volumes for this sample line group. If I zoom in here, you can see an assembly that I'm using for this design. Now, this isn't the only assembly I'm using. I have others, but all of them use common subassembly parts. This lane object happens to be the lane super elevation AOR that comes out of the box with Civil 3D. And this curb and gutter is, is just a curb and gutter uh, subassembly part that comes out of the box with Civil 3D. I'm going to be calculating structural volumes here. So I would like to know the average end area of these closed shapes. If I hover over these subassembly parts, I can see that those shapes have names. You can see that the shape code is called subbase. This closed area, if I hover, is called curb. This closed area is called subbase. The one right above it here is called base. The next one up is called pave two. And the very top here is called pave one. Since each of these closed shapes is coded and has a name, all I have to do is tell Civil 3D that every place where a sample line crosses my corridor design, I just want it to calculate or find the areas uh, of the codes that I give it and then use those to calculate the average end area volumes. That's basically how it works. Let's take a look. I'm gonna start by selecting one of these sample lines. And from the contextual ribbon, I'll choose group properties. I will then go to the material list tab. And then I'm gonna choose add new material. As a courtesy, this is gonna create a material list for me. If I click on that, I can rename this. I'm gonna call it road A materials. And then the first material that I'd like to define, I'll call it pave one. I'm gonna use the same code that's being used in the subassembly. This is gonna be a structural volume. And now that I've made that material, I can use these settings up above to apply data to that material. The data is gonna come from a corridor shape 
And if I open the menu, you can see there's the codes from both corridors that I've sampled. So I would like you to grab all of the PAVE 1 areas from the Road A corridor and all of the PAVE 1 areas from the Road B corridor to do average end area volume calculation for this material. Let's choose another material. I'm going to call this PAVE 2. Once again, just going with the code in the subassembly. Structural. I want you to grab all the PAVE 2 areas from the Road A corridor. Same thing for Road B. Add a material, let's do base. This is gonna be structural. I want all the base areas from both road A and B. We'll add another material. This is gonna be sub base. We'll make the structural. Now, every time I've been making it structural and you may be wondering, there's a few options here. What if I forget? I just wanna show you, if you attempt to add a corridor shape to a material and it's not set to structural, it'll tell you, you have to make that structural. So. Can't forget that. Let me set this to structures. I want all the sub base areas from both road A and road B. Let's do one more material. This would be curb. Here's, you know, if I wanted to, I could give this a, a real world name. If I was extracting the average end area volume of curb, it, the material would probably be concrete. So if you want to give these real world names, you can. I'm going to call this structures. And then I can say, well, for that concrete material, I want you to pull all of the areas from the curb code for road A and road B and use those to calculate your average end area volumes. Once you create your material list, you can come over to the shape style column. When Civil 3D calculates the volumes, it also, as a courtesy, will apply hatch patterns to your section views. So you can see exactly where it's calculating the areas for the volumes. I'm going to pick some styles here. I've already created some of these ahead of time. Maybe one day we'll do a session just on creating Civil 3D styles. We'll do Autodesk base here. This one is going to be the sub base style. I'm choosing different styles so that they each one looks distinct in the section views. Let's choose a curb for this last one. And then finally, a curve tolerance. This doesn't apply to me because I don't have any curves in my baseline geometry at all. But in the event you did, here's where you could take and turn on curve tolerance. The Civil 3D by default is, is a one degree curve tolerance. That means that anytime you have consecutive sample lines that have a one degree angle or greater, it will apply curve correction to the volume calculations between those sample lines. When I'm finished, I'll click OK. And Civil 3D has calculated those volumes. And as a courtesy, it has applied hatch to my section views so I can see exactly where those areas were calculated. All I have to do is pan around and make sure that everything is hatched as I would expect. So we can pan through all of these and these look good with the exception, I saw one right here. In the event you see an anomaly like this, uh, things like this usually occur in the curb return areas or they occur when we transition from one corridor to another. Let's take a look. I'm gonna select this section view just by clicking on the label. I will then right click and from the menu, I'll choose zoom to sample line. It takes me right to the sample line that's used to create that section view. And if I pan this down, we can see that that occurs right where the road A corridor ends and the road B corridor starts. So to resolve this issue, I'm going to select the sample line and I'll click this grip and I can see it's at station 1593.95. I'm going to make this 1593.96. I'm just going to move it a hundredth. And after moving it a hundredth, it is still selected. I'll right click and from the menu, I'll choose zoom to section view. We'll go right back to that view. And you can see that that's been updated. In the event that change affected my volume calculations, those have also been updated. So everything is current now. If I'd like to see the volumes for the road A corridor, all I have to do is select one of these sample lines and from the contextual ribbon, I'll choose generate volume report. I'd like to create a volume report for the road A alignment using the road A sample line group, using the road A material list that we made. All I have to do is choose a style sheet to control the, the formatting of the report. Civil 3D has some of these out of the box. I'm going to use this one called Select Material. I'll click Open and OK, and then I will click to accept the scripts. And here in the web browser, I can see on a sample line by sample line basis, the materials that I defined, the area that it calculated based on the codes that I set. It will also give you the, the included volumes between consecutive sample lines. And in this column on the right, I can see the cumulative volume for all the materials. So if I scroll to the bottom, the road A corridor, which includes a little bit of road B in the, in the returns, is uh, these, these are my materials right here. And then these are my cumulative volumes. Let's close this. 
Now, if I wanted to calculate the volumes for road B, my secondary road, I'm going to do that by creating some more sample lines. I'll come back to the sample lines command and I will select the road B alignment. Same thing when we create sample lines, we have to tell it what to sample. I'm going to hold my shift key and select these and then I will deselect everything. And I would like to just sample my corridor models. So I'll grab road A and control click and get road B. We'll sample those. And then as long as I'm here, I'm going to choose the style. I'd like those to, uh, how the, I'd like them to appear in section views. Let me click OK. Once I determine what I'd like to sample, Civil 3D says, OK, where do you want to place the sample lines? We are going to use the same thing. We're going to use uh, multiple uh, ranges of stations. I'm going to choose by station range. This first range is going to start at the end point of the region. And that first range is going to end here at the end point of my match line. We'll go with a 90 foot swath width, left and right, 50 foot interval leading up to the intersection. And then I would like a sample line at the beginning of that range. And at the end of the range, not necessary. I'm gonna create some more sample lines through here. So let's go ahead and click okay. If I zoom out, you can see those initial sample lines there. Still in the command, let's create another range. This range is going to start at the end point of my match line, and it will end here at the corner of my alignment. And then for the swath width, I would like this to match to this alignment. So the left swath width, let's tie that to an alignment. Which alignment? I'm just gonna pick it on screen. This one, match line south. For the right side swath width, I would like that to follow an alignment. Which alignment? Let's click the green block and we'll grab this one. Same match line, match line south. Since we're in the intersection, I'm gonna tighten up my interval to every five feet. And then I would like to place a sample line at the beginning of this range. However, the end of the range right here, I am not going to place a sample line because there'd be no alignment for it to tie to. It would put a default a 90 foot swath width left and right uh, sample line there. And I would just end up deleting it anyway. So I'm gonna leave that off and I'll click okay. Let's come up and for the next range, I am going to start here at the corner of the alignments and I'm gonna run this to the end point here. And this is going to follow the alignment for the left and right swath width. So for the left swath width, we'll set this to true. Which alignment are you gonna follow here on the left? You're gonna follow this one, match line north. For the right swath width, same thing, gonna match that to an alignment. It's gonna be the same one, match line north. Let's come down here, we're still in the intersection, so five foot interval. Do I wanna place one here at the beginning? No. And do I wanna place one at the end? I'm gonna say yes, we'll, we'll place one here at the end of the match line. And then final range, we'll come up and say range of stations. This last range is going to start at the end point of the match line and it is going to run to the end of my region. So I'll come down and grab that. We'll use the 90 foot swath width left and right because we're beyond the intersection. We're going to go back to a 50 foot interval, same reason. And then I don't need a sample line at the beginning of that range because I already have one at the match line. I would like to have a sample line here at the end. So I'll leave that set to true. I'll click OK and I'll tap my space bar. Once the command is completed, if I zoom out, you can see the sample lines for road B. So these run up to the intersection and I can see that alignment is being used to squeeze these down. Notice everybody's tying to the same alignment. Therefore, there are no intersections. The sample lines pinch down to almost nothing. They pick up here on the other side and they continue on and then they continue north of the intersection. Let's create some section views from these sample lines now. I'm gonna come up and open the section views menu and choose create multiple views. I would like to create section views from the road B alignment using the road B sample line group. Once again, my template, all the settings are appropriate to create draft sections. So I'm just gonna choose create section views and I'll click on screen. If I zoom in, we can see this is the south end of road B where it starts out at two lanes. And as it heads north, we can see it expanding out for the turn lanes. Eventually, it'll make its way into the intersection where the curb and gutter drops off. And then we can see where it pinches down to virtually nothing here. Here's where it picks up on the other side, continues north and continues to expand. Curb and gutter comes back. We can see the widening of the turn lanes here. And then that tapers down to the very north where we're back down to a two lane road. Okay, so all of that looks good. 
let's calculate the materials now for this roadway corridor. If you remember, I made a material list for, for road A, I can recycle or reuse that material list for road B. If I select the road A sample line, any one of them, I can go to group properties. And here on the material list tab, I can right click on the material list and choose copy all materials to copy those to my clipboard. I can then select a sample line from the road B alignment and I can go to group properties. And I can't just right click and paste yet. I need a material list. So I'm gonna choose add new material, which creates a list for me. I will click and we'll call this road B materials. And you can see it created a generic material here. I'm gonna select that and click the red X to take that out. And then I will right click on the list and choose paste materials. If I expand this out, you can see these are all the materials that I defined for road A. And I wanna go with the same thing, the same corridor sampling. If you wanted to, you could edit these now, uh, but everything here is good. The shape styles are good. Uh, don't need to worry about curve tolerance. I don't have any curves in my geometry, so I'm gonna leave that off. Let's go ahead and click okay. And once again, Civil 3D calculates the volumes. And as a courtesy, it hatches the section views. So if I zoom in here, I can see the areas where it found pave one, pave two, base, sub base, and curb. All I have to do is pan around and make sure that everything was hatched as expected. Let me mention that I'm using this workflow to calculate structural volumes here in the uh, assemblies. If I had sampled surfaces, we could also use this technique to calculate earthwork volumes as well. Now, it looks like I do have an anomaly here. Where do you suppose this station is? Probably in a curb return. I'm gonna select that section view and I'll right click. From the menu, I'll choose zoom to sample line. And it happens to be this sample line right here going into the return. If I select that sample line, I can click the grip and I can see this is at 5383.6. I'm gonna move it to 5383.61 and I'll press enter. I just moving it a hundredth. It's still selected. I'll right click and I'll choose zoom to section view to go right back to that view. And you can see how that updated now. If that change affected my volume calculations, those have also updated. If I'd like to view the volume calculations for road B, I'll select one of the sample lines and then from the contextual ribbon, I'll choose generate volume report. I'd like to create a volume report for the road B alignment using the road B sample line group, using the road B materials that we just made. I would like to use a style sheet to format that data. I'll choose this one select material that comes with Civil 3D. When I click okay, I can then click to accept the scripts. And here in the web browser, I can see where every sample line was placed. I can see the materials that I defined and the areas that it calculated based on the codes that I, that I chose. I can see the included volumes between consecutive sample lines. And then I can see the um, accumulative volume for all the materials. If, so if I drag this all the way down to the end, road B, uh, these are my materials and these are my cumulative volumes. And by using this workflow, I have eliminated intersections and I've ensured that um, I don't have uh, duplicate calculations. That said, when we calculate average end area volumes in Civil 3D, it calculates the volumes between sample lines. So it would calculate the volumes between these two and these two. It's also going to calculate a volume between this one and this one. Now, these sample lines are quite short. They're probably only a foot or two wide. So the overlap that we have here is negligible. In most cases, that's, that's not a factor. Uh, but if you did want this to be perfect, let me show you, if you select a sample line, you can go to group properties. Notice here on the material list tab that there is a gap column. Using the gap feature, we can uh, create dead zones, if you will. I can say between uh, this certain stations, I don't want you calculating volumes. If I click in the gap column, I can say add a gap and I can define a station range, start and end where I don't want it calculating uh, average end area volumes. And you can have more than one gap if you want to. Notice that you can apply the gap to the entire material list, or you can have the gap applied to individual materials. You have that granular amount of control. In the interest of time here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say cancel. We'll say everything's okay. Let's close this up. We are dangerously close to the top of the hour. So I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint here. Let me say that if you would like more information about the gaps feature in Civil 3D, Alan Gilbert has created a phenomenal video on that and posted it to YouTube. The name of the video is right there on screen if you wanna take a screenshot of that. Um, I would encourage you to check out that video for more information about that feature. One more thing, I wish I could say that the techniques that we looked at today um, were entirely my idea. They are not. Uh, the, the, what we looked at today is, is from the great people at the Wisconsin DOT. 
So I have in, I'm including a URL here on screen. If you visit this URL, it'll take you to this web page where you'll find a ton of Civil 3D recorded workflows. In fact, some of the best real-world Civil 3D comprehensive uh, workflows that you'll find online, you'll find on this website. So I want to share that with you um, because it kind of ties into what we're talking about today, and it's just another fantastic resource for Civil 3D information. Okay, so we talked about a lot of things today. We talked about how we could create geometry to build match lines um, from alignments. We looked at how we could assign those alignments as targets for our sample lines. We looked at how we could build custom material lists that allow us to extract materials from multiple corridor models. We looked at how we could use the gap feature to control when and where average end area volumes are calculated. And I also shared a bunch of additional learning resources. In the interest of time here, I'm gonna say if there are any questions that have gone unanswered at this point, we will get back to you with an answer. Uh, let me say that on behalf of Jerry Bartles, Alan Gilbert, Angel Espinosa, and myself, I wanna say thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate your time. We hope you find these sessions valuable and we look forward to seeing you guys again at the next session. Thanks.